are these people? Um, we're gonna talk about bananas. 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 Everyone's favorite fruit. Bananas. Um, so you, you know about banana republics, yes? Um, yeah. Very simple stuff. So we're we're gonna get into you it. Know, you we live in one. Yeah. <laughs> so. Chiquita is liable for banana worker murders. Uh, of course, Brett Wilkins out of Common Dreams. Jurors in West Palm Beach, Florida, found the banana giant responsible for funding a right-wing paramilitary group in the 1990s and 2000s and awarded $38.3 million in damages to eight families. So, let's get into it. Uh, Brett writes, okay. in what case litigants are calling the first time an American jury has held a U.S. corporation legal li legally liable for atrocities abroad, federal jurors in Florida on Monday found that Chiquita Brands International financed a Colombian paramilitary death squad that murdered, tortured, and terrorized workers in a bid to crush labor unrest in the 1990s and 2000s. But what does that sound like? Um... Yay. Uh, it, <laughs> <laughs> it, it sounds very much what's happening in the Middle East right now. <laughs> yep. Um, so the federal jury in West Palm Beach, Florida, found the banana giant responsible for funding the United Self-Defense Forces of Colombia and awarded eight families whose members were murdered by the right-wing paramilitary group $38.3 million in damages. The jury's decision reaffirms what we have long asserted. Shakita knowingly financed the AUC, a designated terrorist organization, in pursuit of profit, despite the AUC's egregious human rights abuses, the group said, by providing over $1.7 million in illegal funding to the AUC from 1997 to 2004, Shakita contributed to untold suffering and loss in the Colombian regions of Urubay and Magdalena. Introducing the brutal murders, including the brutal murders of innocent civilians, Earth Rights added. This historic verdict also means some of the victims and families who suffered as a direct result of Chiquita's actions will finally be compensated. So, Don Tiger, breaking in a landmark victory for human rights, a U.S. jury just found Chiquita guilty of funding death squads in Colombia that were killing people near the company's banana farms. First time U.S. courts hold major corporation accountable for human rights abuses abroad. So, yeah, I mean, this is also reminiscent of, you know, labor deaths, right? You know, there's plenty right. of instances of those here in this country, for sure. Um, but anyway, plaintiff's attorney, Agnasi Fresman, why you got to have such a hard name? That's way too many <laughs> consonants in that name. Um, said the verdict does not bring back the husbands and sons who were killed, but it sets the record straight and places accountability for funding terrorism where it belongs, at Chiquita's doorstep. The U.S. labor reporting site, More Perfect Union, called the verdict an unprecedented win against corporate violence, which could be the first of many. I, I doubt that. Um, no. A Chiquita spokesperson told Fruitnet that the company plans to appeal the verdict. Like Very they would. Name. Yep, Fruitnet. Um, the AUC was formed in 1997 via the Union of Right Wing Paramilitary Groups Battling Leftist Guerrillas. Mainly the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia and National Liberation Army in the South America's National Nation Civil War. Closely linked to Colombia's U.S. backed military, the AUC, some of whose members were trained by Israelis. What? Uh, huh? What? A, a link to Colombia's U.S.-backed military, the AOC, some of whose members were trained by Israelis, so it's fucking Israelis again. <laughs> God damn it. Um, I, mean, was, we, I mean, we've talked about this. The Israeli <laughs> web goes long and wide. Deep, worldwide. does it not? Usually when it involves <laughs> gathering resources from brown people, you know, so... Right, <laughs> was designated a terrorist or organization. Or brown people the arms in which yes. to murder other brown people with resources. Yes, right. Um, 
So they were designated a terrorist organization in 01 by the State Department, which cited its massacres, kidnappings of civilians, and participating in the trafficking of narcotics. So, Scott Parson, United Fruit, finally gets its just desserts. In many ways, these fruit companies are the epitome of the bloody U.S. empire in Latin America. It's also an important reminder that Chiquita's actions occurred during the tenure of NATO liberal Billy Clinton. Horrible and disgusting. You know, as, as you do. Disgusting! But, uh, Big Mad Crab, INN member, says there's nothing else to call this other than capitalism. Uh, yes. Yep. Yeah. Very, very true. So, in 07, Shakita pleaded guilty in federal court to funding the AOC and agreed to pay a $25 million fine in hopes it would go away. The company admitted to paying the AUC via its wholly owned Colib Colombian subsidiary, Banadex. What does that sound like? We just read a story about companies using local subsidiaries to get out of legal trouble, yes? Okay. Um, yes. Yeah. So, which was also its most profitable operation. Chiquita recorded these transactions as security payments or payments for security or security services in its corporate records. Chiquita said that it began making the payments after Carlos Castaño, who led the AOC at the time, implied that Banadex employees and property could be harmed. However, despite, critics say, because of the payments, AUC brutally targeted Banadex workers in what victims and their advocates say was an effort to suppress labor unrest. This is, this is what happens. Um, an earlier lawsuit described the fate of one victim who was identified by the pseudonym Pablo Perez. In the early morning hours of November 1st, 1997, a group of heavily armed paramilitaries dressed in camouflaged uniforms stormed Pablo Perez's home in the village of Guacamayal in the banana zone of Magdalena. While he was sleeping, the paramilitaries broke down the door to the home, found and seized him, tied him up, and forced him to accompany them at gunpoint, beating him as they kidnapped him. His corpse was found the following morning with signs of torture and two gunshots, one to the head and one to the body. According to plaintiffs in the case, in 2001, a ship carrying 3,000 AK-47s Assault rifles and five million rounds of ammunition. Lord, I see what you've done for other people. Um, if you could just let that come my way, thank you very much. Um, instead of heading to its declared destination, uh, sorry, left Nicaragua and instead, uh, headed to its declared destination in Panama, dropped off the arms at a Bandit X run port in Turbo, Colombia. Castaño called the procurement the greatest achievement by the AUC so far. The earlier lawsuit states that in addition to using the money provided by Chiquita to drive the leftist guerrillas out of the Santa Marta and Araba banana growing regions, AUC militants would resolve complaints and problems with banana workers and labor unions. Among other things, when individual banana workers became security problems, Chiquita noted that the AUC which responded to the company's instructions by exiting the individual. The document states, according to AUC, a large number of people were executed on Chiquita's instructions in the Santa Marta region. Chiquita has a long history of deadly repressions against workers. Formerly, the United Fruit Company, the infamous Octopus, the New Orleans-based behemoth, monopolized land and market throughout Latin America in the 20th century. Through slick mining campaigns, the UFC introduced the previously unknown banana to consumers in North America and beyond. The company propped up so-called banana republics, extraction economies characterized by state repression, severely stratified social classes, and compliant local plutocracies throughout the region. Sounds familiar. The United Fruit Company yes. stopped at nothing, including participation in U.S.-backed coups, protect its property and profits. By the 1930s, UFC controlled around 90% of the U.S. banana import business. It owned or controlled nearly half of Guatemala's land in the 1940s. In Colombia, where UFC reporters earned the approximate equivalent of $1 per month, 
UFC refused to negotiate with workers who went on strike in 1928 in Cienaga near Santa Marta. U.S. and UFC officials falsely portrayed the strike as communist subversion, and Colombia's right-wing government deployed 700 troops to crush the labor action. Gotta go get those commies, Colin. Gotta get them. <laughs> um, the U.S. Embassy subsequently informed then-Secretary of State Frank Kellogg that I have the honor to report that the total number of strikers killed by the Colombian military exceeded 1,000. So, a little documentary that we're going to get to uh, called The Banana Massacre, but just wanted to get your thoughts before we head to that. Um, I mean, once again, I mean, you kind of reported on this on your other segment where you talk about shall try and move out from Nigeria and leaving them to clean up the mess, essentially <laughs> saying yep. shit, except yep. with bananas and in Colombia. <laughs> but, you know, but there's actual death in, well, no, there was both de deaths in both of them too, you yeah. know? So yeah, it's just the idea of corporations trying to pay off a small subsidiary in order for them to keep the money, but wash yeah. their hands clean of their destruction. So, Ugh. yeah. So, it, 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 again, it's just, I said it in the last segment, <laughs> I'll say it again, it's East Palestine. Yeah. You know, yeah. just, Ugh. you know, just with bananas or last time with oil. So, yeah, that's capitalism. Capitalism, yes. <laughs> Well, let's get to this documentary. Yep. Again, a segment from the Banana Massacre. So, you know, enjoy. They're going to talk about it a little bit better than I did. So, um, Banana Land Blood, Bullets and Poison. So, yep. In 1899, a struggling railman in Central America partnered with the budding Boston Fruit Company to form the United Fruit Company. The goal? Make the banana the cheapest fruit in the USA. The scope of the company grew quickly and enormously. The company's reach was so ubiquitous that it became known throughout Central America as El Pulpo, or the Octopus. United Fruit created a transport monopoly. If you wanted to move fruit overland, you did it with UFC. The company controlled shipping and all major ports in the region. Cheap land and cheaper labor were guaranteed by propping up repressive regimes. Yeah. Radio networks ensured logistical efficiency and served as ready outlets for propaganda. Bananas son la via para la democracia. Soon, everybody who was anybody owned United Fruit Stock. And Washington quickly decided that what was good for bananas was good for the USA. UFC had entered every part of its workers' lives. And in December of 1928, in Colombia's Santa Marta Banana Zone, the workers had had enough and organized a strike. They wanted to be paid money instead of company script, along with a six-day work week, an eight-hour work day, and a written contract commensurate with working conditions in the United States. So, what were the demands? They wanted actual monies, and not monopoly money. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, like, an eight-hour work day. God fucking forbid. And... And right. to make those demands, what did, what happened? But they were immediately labeled communists and radicals by the Colombian government, U.S. Embassy, and <laughs> UFC. On December 6, 1928. It was in the 20s. 1928, yeah. Right? Yeah, that's why everyone's in black and white. Uh, around the same time. Yep. You know, as, you know, worker revolution here. So. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> El Pupo demonstrated its power. All of this was done with the full support of the U.S. State Department as a Marine frigate observed the situation from the harbor. Jack, send this off to Washington. I have the honor to report that the Bogotá representative of the United Fruit Company told me yesterday that the total number of strikers killed by the Colombian military exceeded 1,000. Sound, sound familiar? Yep. Um, 
So. Uh, I mean, I feel like history doomed to repeat itself, no? Um, so, finish out. Uh, violence against Colombian banana workers continued into the 21st century, often with impunity for the perpetrators. Litigants in Doe v. Chiquita said Monday's jury decision marked the beginning of a new era of accountability. This verdict sends a powerful message to corporations everywhere. Profiting from human rights abuses will not go unpunished. God, I wish that were the case. Earthrights International General Counsel Marco Simmons said in a statement, These families, victimized by armed groups and corporations, asserted their power, and prevailed in the judicial process. So, anything to say before we finish this out? I think... Labor ain't sexy. That's our nope. new thing. And <laughs> yep. labor kills. <laughs> I should say that, too. Like, yep. yeah, but, yeah, it's the idea, yeah, but... But even here, if this, I think that's a sub-topic, is that, you know, these workers were essentially organizing to essentially have worker rights and in Colombia at this time you and you don't necessarily hear of that especially given that time in history in the global south or at least that's not reported upon that much we hear a lot you know in terms of in the west in in Europe and in the states but not necessarily in the global south but so the idea that you're having workers in Colombia actually you know, pushing for those rights and, and up to the death, literally mm -hmm. to the death. You know, I think it, it's, a, and it's still happening, honestly, you know, like now. It's probably just a lot more um, overt now in terms of, you know, in given, you know, what's happening. But yeah, but it's still the same idea of capitalism wanting to do its best in terms of banning for the machine that is the corporations and not for the workers, which they will use and abuse in order to get the profit. And so, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just an example of how capitalism destroys literally yep. uh in terms of not just here <laughs> but globally yep. and and but usually it's by our hand often enough that i think that's the kicker that's often by us and then like when we get what we want again throw it off to the country themselves or affiliate of that country to be like do you take care of that you yeah. know and just kind of move on so and we should probably talk that's about the gag right there. more historical Union massacres, because there's been a few, um, mm. which I don't think many people know that history, especially here in this country, that's kind of, you know, definitely not in the books you're given in school. So, but yeah. Right. I'm escaping to the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. Space. <laughs> Where's Boeing and Elon heading? Um. Well, that's the next frontier. Yes, it is <laughs> open for <laughs> profitability. So, speaking of profitability, YouTube won't let us have any. So we had to go to codashv.com/slash indie news network or in the QR code on your screen if you want to get around that little bit of censorship. You can do that. Um, and support us monetarily if you can't. You can just hit like and subscribe, sharing the sharing this video, leaving comments, let us know how good we're doing, you know, and help us get to 2K. We're getting there. We're like six people away. So hit yes. that button. Get us over that. Make me change this slide to 3K, you know? So, but otherwise, thanks for watching.